Hello and uh, welcome to Cheshire Audio. Now today what I want to do is talk about system hierarchy. So that's when you're buying a hi-fi system, what's the most important part of it? Where do you put your budget? You know, how can you design a hi-fi system to give the best possible sound for the money and perhaps be upgradable as well? I mean, that's quite an important factor. Um, I've got in front of me a Riga Planer 10 and its power supply, just as a, I don't know why this is here to be honest, but we have a record player in front of us. And Really, this is the important part of a hi-fi system. Um, logic would dictate that perhaps the speakers are, and you'll see this in some forums and Facebook pages that people say, "Oh, the speakers—it's got to be the speakers because that's the you know they." I changed my speakers; and it made the biggest difference. Um, and it's true, they do. A speaker makes probably the biggest difference in a hi-fi system if you change it, um, going from a little stand mount up to a big floor stand or a you know extra drivers in there. So much more bass, so much more bass. Um, and I do get people saying to me, look, I want to spend, say, a couple of thousand pounds on a hi-fi system. I really like bass. So uh, what do you recommend? Um, the problem with that is, I think, really, that um, all the hi-fi st stuff like your bass and your treble and your, your, you know, the scale of things and everything isn't the most important part of it. And it's not the bit that sort of keeps you listening. The record player... That's all to do with the pitch and the timing, the musicality, the performance. It's a bit like if you imagine the difference between going to see a pub singer at the Albert Hall or perhaps seeing, I don't know, Eric Clapton or whatever at a local pub, which is going to be the better, which is going to be the, the performance that you remember for the rest of your life. It's not going to be some guy at the Albert Hall, you're not going to sit there, oh, I remember that acoustic, it was fantastic. He couldn't sing, but the acoustic was fantastic. You wouldn't, you wouldn't do that. It would be the performance that you remembered. And if you get the best possible record player you can within the system, that's what you're going to get. You may not get the scale. If, you, if your budget sort of restraints mean that you can't say, get the bigger speakers, the bigger amplifier, the whatever else, concentrate on the record player, and th then, then you can think about these things in the future. But the main thing is, if you do it this way around, you will be absolutely entranced by the performance. You'll be, it'll be that sort of situation where, say if you spent like more than half of the, the budget on the record player and 25% each on, on five speakers, you're much more likely to be still up at two in the morning, still thinking, oh, but I'll just one more album. I'll just, a bit like, the next, a bit like Netflix, you know, a bit sort of grabbing another album. I wonder what this sounds like. If you do it the other way around and it's the speakers, you'll, you'll you get that initial sort of rush of, oh, the bass. Um, but then after a couple of albums, you just, just kind of get, you just, well, yeah, well, let's go and do something else now. I've, uh, I've listened to the hi-fi, let's go and do something else. So it doesn't have that engagement at all if you do it that way around. Um, and the other thing with buying speakers first is you're kind of setting up a bit of a precedent that you need, if you want a good hi-fi system and you buy the most expensive speakers you can, that you then need an amplifier that's capable of driving them and then a, a record player with a good enough signal source for the amplifier to do its thing. Uh, because what you have to think about is if you imagine, if you sort of follow the signal from record to out into the air from the speakers, at every point there is loss. So your record player will lose a certain degree of, of the, the sound, so it's the tone arm. The plinth, the plinth is the most important part of a, of a turntable, which I'll, I'll come back to, but you lose loads through the plinth. The tone arm, the cartridge loses some, your amplifier loses some. The speakers lose. Um, I'm pointing to this as an amplifier. This isn't an amplifier. I keep doing this. Um, this is a power supply for the record player. If I, if I point to this and say amplifier, ignore me. I'm, it's, I'm losing the plot slowly. Um, it's all to do with losses, and it's all to do with the type of losses as well. Because what you do not want to lose is the pitch and the timing. Amplifiers don't do pitch and timing, speakers don't do pitch and timing. Well, they do, to a degree, only, only to a small degree. But the, the main part that does this is the record player, because it needs to spin at the right speed, it needs to keep the, 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 um, the, the sort of speed constant, it doesn't need to, well, you don't want it to sort of slow down if there's a dynamic. Um, I mentioned that, I mentioned the slowing down with dynamics in another video where I was talking about turntable power supplies, and I had a chat really, cross with me about that, saying, I've listened to my JVC turntable on crescendos and it does not slow down. It isn't an audible thing. What it is, is if the turntable has that tendency to, to do, well, they all do it, but more, or, more or less, it makes the music sound flat. It's, you have a sort of inbuilt sort of ability to recognise time signatures, I suppose. 
And if it's not right, you just get bored of the music and it just sounds a bit lacklustre. It sounds like the, the musicians aren't particularly that good. Um, but if you hear a turntable which is rock solid, which is really good at pitch, they just sound much more, much more ex sort of exciting to listen to and much, you'll just want to listen to more and more and more of it. It's like going to a live concert. You have that live feeling to the music. So yeah, all about record player. That, 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 is, the, that is the most important part. Um, the, 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 really, like I say, your amplifier speakers is more like the venue. Once you've got the artist right, then you could work on the venue, but you could do that later because you'll still enjoy it. You don't need to go full out and do everything, unless you want to spend loads of money, in which case, yeah, do it straight away. But um, then you can, you can, you know, you can have the, the amplifier that's capable of driving bigger speakers, then you can have a big speakers that have much more bass extension, much more scale, much more dynamic. Um, but they'll still sound engaging and because this is happening. Um, it doesn't mean that you won't get bass if you do it turntable based and minimal on the rest of the rest. It, it isn't, that isn't the case. What you will get is accurate bass. You'll get bass that is exciting to listen to, not, not just this sort of warm, woolly, sort of woofly sound that people think is bass, that isn't actually music. And it's something that once you've heard it done right, you won't go back. It's a um, very pretentious audiophile thing, but it is, bass does need to be tight and fast and accurate and sound like a bass instrument, otherwise you just get bored of it. And it's, I found this with a lot of people, a lot of people don't think that's the case, but it is. Um, but anyway, I'll, not, I'll stop about that side now. Um, turntable hierarchy is quite interesting. Now, there's an awful lot of talk on forums that gets me, just get me quite cross and I shouldn't get cross really that the cartridge is the most important part. It's the styles, that's the bit that hits the record, so therefore that is the most important part of a record player. It really isn't. Um, it's the same hierarchy here as we're talking about in the whole system. The cartridge is kind of, even though it's at the, it's at the beginning of the, of the chain as far as the signal goes, it's sort of at the end of the chain as far as pitch and musicality and resonance is concerned, because Record players pick up resonance, they create resonance. I mean, the, the motor under here, a lot of, there's a lot of resonance, we can't quite see it from there, but the motor is here, mounted to the main board. If there's noise coming through through the motor, you, again, you won't hear it as noise, it'll just be a sort of blurring of low level information. If the, the motor noise is sort of managing to get through into the signal and blurring things, then that loses information. If there's resonance with it, if the arm itself is sort of capable of picking up resonance or whatever, it need, the, the arm needs to be very dead, have very good bearings, very little movement in the bearings, very, very rigid. Um, all these things are important. If you're mounting a, an expensive cartridge on a tone arm that has a quite bad in, internal resonances, is quite slack bearings, a lot of extra information from that cartridge will be lost within the sort of structure of the tone arm. It'll never actually get out to the, the amplifier because it'll be clouded by the resonance within the tone arm, clouded by the resonances within the turntable. Um, it's, it's a very noisy place for a cartridge, which is basically a measuring device. It's a, I think this is a Roy Gandhi phrase um, from Riga. It's, a cartridge is a, a vibration measuring device. And if it's, it's a bit like if you're trying to have a conversation with somebody in a noisy room, the difference in the clarity of voice, if, you, if everybody else walks out of the room and you're just, it's just, it's just a one-on-one, -on -one, the clarity is so much better than if there's other people and there's background noise, the diff you know, how difficult it is to hear somebody's conversation. And it's the same, if you imagine a record player as being a noisy room and you're trying to clear as many of the other people in that room that are creating this background hubbub away so that the, the one voice you're trying to hear, which is the cartridge, can do its job properly and you can hear it properly. And it's all about rigidity and lack of resonance and all this sort of thing. We've talked about pitch stability. That's another issue entirely, but that's really, that's probably the most important part of it. So when you read on forums about people perhaps buying a plane of one and that I'm going to put a 200 pound cartridge on it and that'll really lift it. It will, but it won't lift it 200 pounds worth because there's so much inherent noise in there. The tone arm on the plane of one is nowhere near as good as when, this, when you get to a plane of 10, a plane of 10 you can put any cartridge you want in it because it's a very, very stable, very solid platform for a cartridge. I mean, we've got in here a, uh, 
a Kiseki Purple Heart, which I think is about three thousand, well, just short of three thousand pounds now. And this, and it's amazing. It's fantastic. But if you put that cartridge into a budget turntable, you wouldn't hear ninety percent of what it's doing. Probably, it, you'd, you'd you'd get a, a nice clear sound, but it wouldn't have the sparkle and the dynamics and that realism that that has in this turntable, um, because it's out of it's because everything's shifted the wrong way around and it's not in a, a quiet room, really. So yeah, that's turntable hierarchy. A bit waffly, sorry about that. Um, but it's something that needs to be got right. So yeah, if you turntable, if you, with a turntable, if you're trying to, again, if you're trying to sort of engineer something into your budget, spend as much as possible on the, the, the turntable itself, the plinth, the motor mechanism and all that side is the most important part of it. It's to do with noise rejection. Turn arm is less important. Um, you don't often get, there's not as many turntables now where you can buy them se with, separate, you know, buy the turn arm separately. Um, but if that was the case, then get the best deck you can and then budget on the turn arm, then budget on the cartridge in that order. Don't think that a cartridge will save the day because it can't. Uh, it's wonderful when you get to this level and you can put high end cartridge in, it's an amazing thing. But there's no point doing it until you get to that level. So there you go, that's that system hierarchy. Hopefully well explained. Hopefully well explained. Um, but like I say, it, it has become more prevalent now. There's an awful lot of people getting quite confused. And I think there is an awful lot of wrong information on forums. I, I, uh, certain Facebook pages I've been on to, and there's an awful lot of, well, the cartridge is all, or speakers are all, or... Uh, I'm not quite sure why that's... Well, I, I know why that's resurfaced. I think it is. It's, it is a logical... It's a log logical assumption, but when you think it through, like I say, follow the signal. Um, you can kind of see where you need to spend the money, where things need to be as good as possible. Yes, yeah, so ho hopefully that's um, cleared things up a little bit. Um, if you've got any more questions about this, just give, me, just give me a call at the shop. I'll put the phone number at the end, or you can give me an email. Um, I don't tend to get around, I don't tend to be able to watch comment, uh, look at the comments nowadays. I think there's too, way, way too many of them, and I, I'll, I'll sometimes manage to skin through a few, but it's, there's 40, 50 a day, and it's just, I, can't, I can't get through them all nowadays, unfortunately. I'd love to, I really would, because I do get some lovely comments, but uh, I just can't keep up with it nowadays, so uh, real apologies for that. Um, and it's lovely to, to read your comments, but um, I just can't, I can't manage it, I can't manage it anymore, uh, because I'm just sort of trying to run the shop and do other things as well, and it would, it would take all day, so um, apologies for that. But yeah, like I say, hope this kind of explains a few things about you know, how to build a system, um, if you want to give me a call and, and talk it through anytime really just, just ring the number at the end so yeah thanks for watching uh, don't forget to subscribe and give us a like and I'll see you in a future video thank you very much <laughs>